So hello, welcome on in to a, another episode of Bar Talk. It is Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. I guess happy Monday. What's up, Noah? What's up, Keeler? What's up, Anna? Hello, Simone. All right, guys. So welcome on in to Bar Talk. Um, I'm really excited for tonight. We are at episode number 26, I believe. I somehow like messed up the count along the way, but that's also like my dyslexia probably kicking in. So like I'm going to have to recount them and figure it out. Whatever. It's fine. Um, if you, if this is your first time coming in, guys, welcome on in. If you are a returning customer of mine, please know how grateful I am to have you guys return. I know you have a lot of choices for places to go, and it really means a lot to me that you're choosing to come and be here with me. So, what am I drinking? So, I actually already poured because I was, I just ate before this, and I got this bottle from Binnie's. Um, Los Vascos, I believe is how you say it. It's from Chile. It's delicious. Um, I really tend to like a lot of red wine from South America. It tends to be a little bit more on the fruit forward side and it's not very like leathery and like super dry. So that's why I like it. So cheers, cheers, cheers guys. Okay, so I would love to know what everyone is drinking. So if you can please comment and tell me what it is that you are drinking tonight with me. So let's go ahead and um, let me tell you guys about our next guest, Simone. Simone is a professional volleyball player in Italy. Um, sh she just started her first year with uh, an Italian team in August. She is an alumni of Georgetown University and she is a Chicagoland girl hailing from Oak Park. So let me go ahead and get her on. And as uh, I get Simone on, guys, I would love to have you guys tell me, is, I, why isn't this working? Okay, maybe. I had to just put lotion on, so my hands are like really sticky right now, which is like not fun. They're just super raw. All right, let me go back down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? It's so nice uh, to meet you. <laughs> I know. It's so nice to officially meet you too. Um, okay, so tell me, what are you drinking with me this evening? Oh, so... Actually, my mom found these. It's a Crispin Rosé Hard Cider. Delicious. Um, see it. Yes. But yeah, super good, super light, easy, nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing crazy about that. Okay, so before we get into, like, all of my questions and, like, talking points I have, because I have so much mm -hmm. I want to ask you, did you watch The Last Dance last night? I did. I just watched it last night. I was <gasps> sitting on the couch like, oh, my God, like, just thinking about – the fact that I wasn't even like alive when <laughs> that was going on is like mind blowing to me. It's... But I already like I knew so much about it. But I was yeah. like newborn I baby. <laughs> newborn yeah, I was born in ninety two, so I I don't remember any of it. Yeah. But I just remember like again, I don't remember anything, but like watching it, I was like, Oh my god, I would have stayed up until seven in the morning yeah. to watch the entire All ten ten part. And I think everyone felt that way. <laughs> and then it felt really nice because I felt like Tw like the sports Twitter world was like back in action for the yeah. first time. It was so beautiful. It was crazy. It I was, loved it. I know. Okay. So I think it's so amazing that you got to continue to play volleyball after college. Like most people don't get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. So can you take me through what the process was and like how one goes about even being able to play overseas? Uh, so it was actually... <laughs> I didn't decide to go until super last minute. Um, most people kind of make the decision like maybe like the end of their junior year or like the beginning of their season, senior season. But I really didn't decide until like after my like last home game. And I was like, eh, I don't really want to go. Like I was so scared to go play overseas and be by myself just because like I uh, went to university in Washington, D.C. So, you know, I was always like an hour plane ride up from home. Like I've never been that right. far. Um, but then I, I had so many of my like high school coaches telling me and even like assistant coaches of other teams, like after games, they would be like, you're going to keep playing. Right. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> what are you, <laughs> what are you talking I mean, I about? <laughs> yeah. And so I, know, I finally made the decision and then I had to go about the process of finding an agent. And so that was also kind of scary because I think there are only like maybe two or three American based agencies for professional volleyball but most of them are international mm. um so outside of the american agencies i spoke to 
I actually reached out to a French agent and a Swiss agent and a Turkish agent. And um, the agent I'm actually signed to now, he's Italian. He actually found me, which was crazy because I didn't even think my name was floating around over there at all. And it was. Um, and so he reached out to me and we had a really good connection. And I just signed with him in about, I think, March is when I signed my first agent contract. <laughs> um but I had to make my own highlight tape and that took forever because iMovie is hard. Yes, <laughs> it is. Than most. <laughs> yeah. But like, if you know nothing about that, like it took me forever to put together a little like four minute video. Um, it was fun though. And then, yeah, I signed my agent in March and then signed to my first team in April. That is so amazing. So before <laughs> you went to Italy, you had visited there, correct? No. You had never. I had never Italy. been to Italy. I've never been to Europe. I had never flown on a flight longer than two hours. <laughs> so not only did you, okay, so like you're not only playing in Italy, but now you're like completely immersed in their culture. What has been mm -hmm. the one thing that you have loved about just being in Italy for the time that you were able to be there? Um, I think the one thing that was that I love and even still miss was the environment and kind of the scenery. Um, cause you know, I'm from Chicago, so yeah, living in the suburbs of Chicago, like the closest thing to like country we have is like Wisconsin Dells, like, you know, <laughs> but yeah. like, or even like DeKalb, like there's like a lot of open space over there. But, um, I lived in a small town, kind of like right outside of a city, but mm -hmm. it was just so beautiful. Like, um, like driving to practice, the Alps were right there. And like, oh, sometimes wow. like I would be late to practice because, 200 sheep were crossing the road like <laughs> it was stuff like that but it was it was so beautiful and like our town was so little and there was like a farmer's market every week and the food was so good and there was just so much to see like you could literally go like walk around in a castle if you wanted to and like sit in the grass and like look over like um I lived in Brescia and so it's kind of more like in the mountains than where I lived Mm -hmm. And so you could, like, go to the top of the castle and just, like, look over the entire city. It was amazing. Oh, it was so my amazing. God. Mm -hmm. So uh, you were in Italy when we all found out about this. Correct? Corona. <laughs> about <laughs> Corona. About the Rona. Yes. So um, can you just take me through, like, what, like, you had to go through? Because you're obviously back home right now. So what was mm -hmm. that like? Um, it was a mess. Um. So, like, Corona kind of smacked Italy in the face, and yeah. all of our practices and games got postponed. Um, we actually had a game, and they called it, they, like, texted in the group chat, like, games canceled. Like, we have practice, but that's it. And we were like, okay, like, it'll all, like, die, die down in a week. Mm -hmm. And so everything was pretty normal. Like, everything was still open. Um, restaurants just closed earlier and um people were starting to wear masks and stuff like that but everything was still open it was pretty normal um I had people calling me like are you okay like I heard people are dying in Italy and yeah. <laughs> yes people were dying but there just it felt it didn't feel like anything crazy was going on you know yeah. um and then about a week later we had a game but we had no fans so we were still practicing but you know we had our first game with no fans it was so weird it was was so that weird. eerie? A little bit. Like, it kind of just felt like, because, you know, in sports practice, like, you have your scrimmage or you have, uh, it's like, six-on-six six court in, like, a regular practice. It, lit it literally felt like a normal practice. And, like, we they had, like, the announcer and everything <laughs> for no fans. So it was super weird. Um, but then after that game, they were like, okay, we're closing Northern Italy completely. And so our game was, like, right outside of northern Italy. So we had to, like, rush and shower and, like, get back to the northern Italy region because that's where we lived. Oh, wow. Which was also crazy. And so then after that, maybe, like, three days later, that's when Trump closed the borders mm -hmm. on the 13th. And I'm, like, freaking out. My boyfriend's with me at the time. Like, we're free. He had come, like, five days before. <laughs> so oh, we're my both gosh. Like, like, okay, like maybe I should think about going back because um, they were like, you haven't, it was something like you had till Friday to come back into the States. But then we figured out it didn't apply to non-U.S. citizens. So I was like, mm. hey, like I feel better. Yeah. <laughs> but then um, 
I was still trying to wait until the Italian league canceled its season because just for like contract reasons and stuff like that, because like Germany had canceled their season, France had canceled their season, Switzerland had canceled their season. So I'm like, okay, like Italy didn't cancel their season. Um, they decided to wait, but me personally, I couldn't wait because like one way tickets back to the States were like two, three, four thousand dollars and I got super lucky and I came across a ticket that was only like five hundred dollars and I was like calling my agent I was like I need to get this ticket you have to yeah <laughs> like I had to I was like this is too scary and too risky and like there's no way the league was going to continue like there's no way yeah and so like technically the Italian league would have been done last week and so there was no way they were going to pick up and continue after April and like everything still shut down so um, luckily I was able to get those plane tickets and me and my boyfriend actually flew out to get, I bought plane tickets on Friday and we left on Sunday. And so I had wow. to like pack up my entire apartment. <laughs> and then like, I actually ended up flying with like five or six other U S girls and we were all on the same flight and they, it was the same thing with them. Like they had to like make split decisions, buy, buy plane tickets, get to the airport and we had to go. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so happy that you were able to, you know, get home and just be with the people that you love, you know, yeah. it's like, God forbid you were still stuck over there. It's, I think that's like the, the craziest part of all this. Like, yeah. yeah, you're quarantined, but like quarantined by yourself in a country that isn't your home, like yeah. can't, can't even fathom. Um, yeah. well, my, we're, I, I, I bet your parents are very happy to have you. Oh home. yeah. My mom was losing her mind. Oh my God. <laughs> she was losing her mind and like even now like I've like read articles about U.S. citizens like being stuck because there are no yeah. flights and my mom was like you need to come home right now <laughs> oh god mom oh my god well very happy you're back thank um, you I want to talk about your early volleyball years so your mm -hmm. club years mm -hmm. so um you went to first alliance lions yeah. junior at 15 years old yeah. and uh, the transition from your 15th to your 16th year was a big year. So yeah. I had reached out to one of your former teammates, Riley Bruchette. Because I, I, I said, I was like, what is, what is something that I should, what's something really important I should know about Simone? Mm -hmm. And she's, and this is, this is what she said. She goes, she never gave up and kept wanting to get better. And she came back 16 as a whole new player and excelled from there. <laughs> So what did you learn that you needed to do in order to excel and transition from maybe that like gangly 15 year old to that like stud 16 year old? Yeah. Uh, well, so 15, that was my very first season. And so that year I was kind of just like watching, just watching and like trying to be patient and absorb all the information I could absorb because all my teammates like Riley and a bunch of other girls have been playing at first alliance for so many years mm -hmm. and so it was like going to my first volleyball tournament and like seeing all those courts and all those girls and kind of figuring out like how it was kind of not just amongst like you know a competition amongst teams but it was a competition to get a scholarship to the school you wanted to go to and so right 15 zero is like okay like this is the position i'm in this is the team that i'm probably going to be on for the next four years like these are the girls I'm going to lean on. And, like, once I kind of figured all of that out and had it, like, <laughs> sorted out in my brain, I was like, all right, it, it, it's go time. And, you know, I was really quiet and kind of, like, reserved just because in my head I was just trying to put stuff together. But then I had a coach. She was like, look, like, like you have it. Like, you have the skill. You have the height. You have the strength. And she was like, but you can't. She called me Bambi. She was like, you can't be a little Bambi. She was like, you have to be a beast on the court. And I was like you right like, <laughs> like you're so right and like I knew it I was always like super soft-spoken and like like a little reserved but I was like this is the one thing like the one thing where I can't be like that and that's kind of where it just clicked for me and love just that. got better from there <laughs> love that so what would your advice be to young girls who are trying to transition from Bambi to the Beast <laughs> um Volleyball is 80% mental, 80% mental. Like you get to, you know, there's obviously the basic skills and learning that you need to get better. But once you get all that stuff down packed, 
Like the only way you're going to get better is if you want to get better and you can't be afraid to make mistakes. You can't be afraid to get yelled at and you can't be afraid to be a little aggressive. Amen. And I think, yeah, like a lot of girls, I know it was hard for me just stepping out of that into that whole zone of just being more aggressive. But like, once you do it, it'll make your game so much better and it's so much more fun. <laughs> So to being aggressive, we'll say. So let's yes, go ahead and cheers. take a uh, cheers before we get into some <laughs> rapid fire questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Simone, it has to be the first thing that comes to your mind. Try not to hesitate, but if you do, I understand, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. what's something people would be surprised to know about you? I played the clarinet for nine years, and I only stopped because of volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, uh, White Sox or Cubs? Cubs. Oh. I know. It's crazy because oh. I'm from the south side, too, but yeah. I know. Oh, it's okay. The whole we goat all... thing just drew me in. The, whole... <laughs> the goat is what made you just like, a Cubs fan? Well, no, no, no. Just, like, the whole story behind it and, like, mm -hmm. the whole hundred years. Like, they just, the history part really just drew me in. <laughs> got you. Got you. Okay. What is your go-to drink at a bar? Tequila Red Bull. Damn. I have a lot of energy and I could just <laughs> I really like to dance so like when I'm at the club I'm like tequila red bull let's go. If I'm like dancing if I'm just like relaxing at a bar maybe like a glass of wine um, some sort of like maybe like a Malbec or Pinot. It just depends on my environment. Got you. <laughs> what <Okay>. I'm doing. <laughs> um, what is the kindest thing a stranger has done for you? Um, I was at the, like a 7-Eleven grocery store and I was buying just like some snacks and stuff. And this older man was like, you are so beautiful. Like, I'm going to buy all of your stuff. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he paid for all my stuff and he was like, have a great day. And I was like, so nice. <laughs> oh my God, that's so sweet. <laughs> Um, what is one thing you miss doing that you can't do right now? Going out with my friends. <laughs> I miss just going downtown, going to the clubs, the bars, going out to eat. I just like being around people. You yeah. can't do that right now. Feel that. Okay, this is a question for everyone who is watching as well. I'd love to get your response. Um, if Voldemort offered you a hug, would you accept it? Might have to. I feel really? like that is just like a legendary, like, I mean, if you're like, and I don't know if everyone's watching is into Harry Potter like that, but if you're like really into Harry Potter, like, maybe. Only, I mean, if he was like going to hug me and like kill me type thing, but if it was kind of like a, a fan, like, meet Voldemort type thing, like, absolutely, but if it feels like, you know, he's trying to just kill everybody and right. kill Harry Potter, then probably not. <laughs> got you, got you. Okay. Um, what is the best piece of advice someone is giving you? Um, don't be, don't let fear guide you. Ooh. Like, do not be guided by fear. Love that. Do not mm. be guided by fear. Mm -hmm. um, what has been your favorite place that you visited? Verona. Where's Italy. Verona? In Italy? Verona. Mm -hmm. What did you it's love about beautiful. it? beautiful. Um, it's super, like, old, like, rustic looking. Um, mm -hmm. There's, like, a big coliseum, and um, all of the buildings are just, like, colorful and brick and like when you go do all the like kind of the touristy area all yeah. the shoppings and stuff it's like this kind of like long narrow street and the stores are just kind of like nudged <laughs> into the walls it's super beautiful especially around uh, christmas time when they have the christmas market so oh, cool. oh i'll have to put that on my list um okay verona i got it all right what do you think is the closest thing we have to magic on earth Closest thing to magic. Um, I think having like a genuine connection with someone. Like you know how sometimes you meet people and you just have that like 
immediate connection yeah. and you're just like oh my gosh I think that's the closest thing to magic we have I love that I would def- I would agree with that too mm-hmm. um do you have any hidden talents hidden talents um aside from the clarinet I'm pretty good at painting <laughs> you're good at painting mm-hmm. all right um so I have to ask because I saw this photo did you mm-hmm. sing the national anthem <laughs> At yes, school? yes. Me and my teammate, we decided like two, three days before we were like, "We're gonna do this. Like, this is how we're gonna go out." <laughs> <laughs> so, this is your senior year, like last game. That's what you did. Yes, yeah, senior day. We were like, "We're doing this." And my whole my whole team hyped us up. They were like, "You have to do it. You have to do it." <laughs> can 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 you do it now or am I putting you on the spot oh my gosh, no. I see. I trained <laughs> for it. I trained for it for like three days. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We won't. We won't have you do it. We won't have you do it. I promise. Okay. Um, Okay. What is a trend you would like to see disappear? A trend. Mm, See, that's tough. I was gonna say TikTok, but then I got sucked in. (laughs) I got sucked in. It's so entertaining. So it really is. I guess I'll just go with TikTok for now because that was the, for a long time. I was like, I hate this. I hate this. Like, <laughs> it needs to go away, but I'm trapped. So, okay, this is a would you rather question. So everyone who's watching, I'd like you to answer this as well. And it is: Would you rather be able to dodge anything, no matter how fast it is moving at you, mm-hmm. or be able to ask any? three questions to anyone and have them answer it accurately without lying. Dodge anything. Dodge anything? Mm-hmm. Dodge anything. So guys, for those who are watching, would you rather be able to dodge anything or ask anyone three questions and get the truth out of them? So let me know below. Um, who should my next guest be? Oh, um specific to like the Chicagoland area? Um, anywhere, anyone, anywhere? yeah. Mm. Anyone you think maybe would be um, like a good story or interesting or funny. Mm. <laughs> interesting or funny. Um, actually, I have a friend, her name's Jessica Lathan. Okay. She's kind of like starting to pick up um, like a blog, like she writes a blog. Um, and so I think it'd be really interesting for her to talk about that. She also played volleyball, and she's also from Chicago, and she also played for the first line. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, she's super sweet and gives really good at, like, speaking and telling stories. She's a really good writer, I think, personally. Oh, I um, love that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So some people had asked, what was the question? So my question that I want to know is, would you rather be able to dodge anything or be able to ask anyone any three questions you wanted and get the accurate answer. So let me know. Um, Okay, last two questions. What Mm -hmm. have you learned the most about yourself during this time? Um, I am a lot more patient with people than I thought I was. for example, while I was in Italy, um, my coach <laughs> was not as patient as some of the coaches that I had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like some people get worked up and they yell and scream and, you know, they do what they do. And me personally, like I'm just a very like laid back person. And I like you don't have to tell me things more than once. Like I click on pretty fast. Right. And so I really had to get used to just that kind of like aggressive angry environment and it was really hard for me at first but you know I knew he cared I knew he cared about me getting better so kind of just being able to like hear the words and not like his tone and how his body language which are all like very important things for you know human interaction and communication Mm -hmm. um (laughs) I'm sorry my brother just (laughs) said a comment on the live um is he yeah. the one that says you're more like you're like your brother in more ways than you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, just being able to hear what they're saying sometimes it's it's very 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 hard. Um, Got you. 
gotcha. Yeah. All right. What will be the first thing that you will do when all of this is over? Go to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> If they're open, who knows if they're open? I mean, like, hopefully they're open this summer. Me four tequila Red Bulls. Please. <laughs> <laughs> With my friends, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Okay, so if you can go ahead and please raise your glass with me and everyone who's watching, please raise your glass. Um, I found this from, uh, it's a quote from Goodwill Hunting, and it's from Robert Williams. Mm -hmm. And he says, you will always have bad times, but that mm -hmm. will always wake you up to the good stuff you weren't paying attention to. Mm -hmm. So here is to seeing all the good stuff that you never saw before. Wow. Love that. Cheers. 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 <laughs> cheers, cheers. All right, Simone, thank you so much for coming on in. I hope you had so much fun and we will talk very, very soon. Stay safe and thank you, so uh, you much. take care. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Bye girl. Bye bye. All right, guys, that was Simone. I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, again, like, so crazy, just her perspective on, like, being able to see everything from, like, two different points of view. It's wild. Guys, thank you again for tuning on in to another episode of Bar Talk. If you guys have noticed, I put Biggie back up. Him and his creepy eye creeping over my shoulder. Look at him. Biggie is back. He is alive. He is well. Um, okay, guys, thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I know you guys have a lot of places to go to. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart for choosing to come here. You guys have a lovely rest of your Monday night. I'm going to go ahead and finish this glass of wine. I'm going to try not to finish the bottle. I make no promises. But everyone stay safe, wash your hands, drink responsibly. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, everyone, bye-bye.